All right. Uh, good morning, uh, afternoon or evening, everyone. Uh, because looking at the participants, this is a time zone neutral event. Uh, my name is Mark, uh, and I'll be your uh, host for today. We'll start uh, with a few uh, tips and tricks um, on uh, online math classes, but also in relation to uh, why teaching math uh, just got harder. Uh, after that, we'll have two uh, two speakers. Um, uh, one uh, will be live, uh, Michael, and one will be recorded because Anne uh, she lives in Melbourne and it's uh, well, it's uh, two a.m. there uh, right now. Uh, Michael teaches uh, stats and Anne teaches math. Um, after that, uh, I will do um, a bit of a live. A brief technical demonstration to show you some of the the, the online uh, tools uh, we've been talking about uh, and we'll finish up with a, a q a session so uh well during this webinar we're really happy that we can share with you some tips and trips uh on how to provide personalized and engaging uh teaching when moving your classes online uh, the subject is of course not new uh we've been at it for about a decade already uh, but it's it's more prevalent than ever now. Um, the focus on this webinar will lie on on higher ed uh, as well as the use cases. Uh, but many of the things that we're going to discuss can also apply to to secondary ed. We're sort of dealing with a, a new status quo now uh, because of COVID nineteen. But let's start at the at the beginning because first uh, let me define what we mean with. The, the math problem. Uh, of course, it's literally the problem that students have with math, uh, but more specific, um, it is uh, the mathematical ability and their preparedness to study for it uh, that is declining. Um, and particularly in, in, in related academic subjects like uh, engineering, uh, biology, economics, uh, et cetera, uh, for the teacher, um, it is the issue of having to teach math to large groups of first year students uh, who are going for a non math major in, in, in college or uni. Um, and these students are not particularly good at math. Uh, they're not particularly liking it and because they chose a, a non math major and they, they may even uh, suffer from uh, math anxiety. And teachers only get a limited time like a trimester, a semester or, or sometimes even half semester to get everybody on par to to get everybody on the same desired level uh, and that level being um, what should be a good foundation uh, and success factor for uh, the rest of uh, of your studies yeah the challenge uh, to deliver this the so-called service education uh, was already there before COVID-19 uh, mostly due to the huge class sizes uh, and uh, the limited options to provide personalized attention to students. Uh, but since recent months, it's become more challenging than ever. And there are, there are actually two main reasons for that. One being that um, uh, apart from that, there were fewer math classes in high school to begin with, uh, in quite a few countries, um, the high school central exams were, were canceled altogether. Um, and um, that led to also a, a higher enrollment um, because of these cancelled exams and eh, because everybody passes, but also the fact that, that many students, they don't, don't take a gap year anymore because they cannot travel or because it's an uncertain world at the moment. And so the influx uh, of new college and, um, and uni students is, is both higher uh, and it's more heterogeneous than ever before. And uh, uh, yeah, on top of that, in many countries, it's still uncertain uh, what the teacher is going to look like. Uh, uh, in the fall semester. Yeah, so how are you going to give that attention to those students that need it? Will it be in a face to face or now call a mask to mask setting? Uh, will it be a fully online setting uh, or any blended or uh, hybrid mode in between? And, and, and yesterday I even heard the term high flex instead of hybrid uh, when it comes to organizing classes, because that much flexibility is is required from from both students and, and teachers. So it's no surprise actually that uh, recent studies have shown that the, the work pressure uh, for teachers has increased. Um, not that it was low to, to begin with, uh, of course. 
Well, um, so far uh, uh, for the bad news, and uh, the good news is that, um, of course, uh, although teachers were forced to do so, all over the world, they were able to move their classes, uh, their teaching and learning online. And I think the, the drive and creativity with which this was done is, is, is very impressive. But math and stats, um, along with other related uh, exact subjects, are often the odd ones out when it comes to going online. And there are tools like online or pre-recorded lectures, um, ebooks, PDF, or uh, the quizzes, multiple choice quizzes, uh, in your default LMS, they simply don't do the job. Eh? It's supporting those students who need it most uh, and uh, keeping them engaged eh, in these classes where they are struggling. It requires more than the, than the default, uh, default toolkit. And these more specialized tools are out there. Um, we've kept close contact with a lot of universities over the last months, and we were and who were able to use these 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 tools. And uh, now I will share some um, successful trends that we've spotted. Uh, and although these are trends, and hence they we see them at a lot of places, um, I'll also try to uh, be specific in some of the some of the use cases. So the first thing is. Uh, it's a bit of a uh, a bit of a no-brainer, uh, of course, but you got to continue to to offer personalized attention where where needed. So either in person through Zoom, uh, an online forum, or through digital tools. Uh, this was already hard to to begin with because of the the large class sizes, but actually online tools do offer an opportunity here. Eh? You can they can even relieve you some uh, work from your from your schedule. Uh, uh, but you got to make sure that these uh, tools offer a, a rich and, and, and personalized learning experience. Um, yeah, one example here uh, is uh, Rotterdam uh, Polytechnic, uh, a Dutch um, a college level um, institution. And after they implemented a, a rich uh, feedback tool, an interactive tool there, they're passing grades for these foundation uh, subjects. They, uh, they went up uh, significantly. So that's a really good result. But related to that, you got to implement uh, interactive tools. And not only because they, they add to the learning process and the uh, knowledge retention, uh, be, but also because one's span of attention online isn't the same uh, as in a, in a live setting. Eh? Only showing a, a recorded lecture uh, or a PDF version of a book, it's nothing like the day-to-day the -day online world where the 18 year olds live in and they're they're used to, to getting instant feedback and replies on everything they do um, online keeping aside if it's valuable feedback uh, or not and um here a, 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 a nice example is deakin university also from from melbourne and australia by the way and um they implemented a digital tool and although it was um optional for students, so it was not compulsory whatsoever. The students picked up it very well. Uh, each student made hundreds of uh, exercises uh, each. And that, yeah, that was solidly due to the fact that it offered much more interactivity than the, 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 the paper textbook they uh, should have otherwise uh, used. Another very important one is um, that you should use continuous assessment. Um, yeah, since you're not there anymore in class uh, to keep track of, uh, of progress, and you might even uh, lack the option to do um, uh, a summative exam uh, anyways at the end of your unit, um, you should look for other uh, terms of uh, continuous assessment. And a good example is to use weekly uh, or periodically scheduled tests, um, or another thing is uh, mastery-based learning. Um, uh, and I have a few examples of, um, of those. Uh, the first one uh, here in Amsterdam, the Maritime College. And they actually, this was pre-COVID, they, they actually haven't had summative exams for years in their, in their math and physics classes, or, and stats, uh, by the way. Uh, they don't do the exams, they just require their students to all achieve a 100% mastery score on, uh, on the practice material that they're, that they're offering. Um, another example is uh, University College Dublin, and uh, this was in some pretty intense uh, linear algebra courses, uh, and they use uh, small weekly 
tests that count towards the final unit grade. And um, um, this way the students are involved from the, from the very beginning, um, especially benefiting those who need that most, of course. And the students also feel engaged because they really know sorry, what they're working for eh, towards on a, on a weekly basis. Um, and um, related to this is um, you should make the most out of your, your learning analytics, uh, of course, for a whole lot of reasons. Most of them having to do with uh, a shortage of uh, available teaching and, and lecturing time. That's nothing, nothing new. Uh, but learning analytics are indispensable to, to know which students are in the danger zone uh, or which subjects are, are making them uh, struggle. And mm, here I want to uh, tell about Maastricht University. Uh, uh, we know of a, of a teacher there. He's, he's doing a, a 1300 student uh, class at the beginning of the year. And he only has seven weeks to do a full calculus course uh, with the, the mentioned heterogeneous influx. And so he really needs the learning analytics uh, to, to run this, uh, in this large group. And um, actually on top of that, uh, this teacher, he uses the, the same learning analytics to do uh, research on um, for, the rest of the, for the rest of the year. And he, he publishes papers uh, on that. Um, so yeah, those were um, my um, uh, tips and, uh, and tricks here. Um, uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, later uh, during the, the webinar, uh, but now, um, well, more interestingly, we're going to uh, listen to two teachers uh, for the coming 20 minutes or so, and um, we will hear firsthand how they uh, embraced uh, digital tools and, uh, and were able to, to step up their, uh, their online game. So I'm going to hand the floor to, uh, to Michael uh, right now. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, I'm Dr. Michael Mackesy. Um, I teach at Amsterdam University College for the past uh, eight years, where I teach math and statistics. Um, one of the courses I have been teaching the whole time is a introductory statistics course, the, one, the third one you see on the slide, Basic Research Methods and Statistics. Uh, we had a long, a long um, process of that class evolving uh, over time and we, we couldn't reach a point where we were satisfied. Uh, number one, we couldn't find a textbook that we liked that was at the right level and um, that had examples and exercises that were um, in the discipline that this course is directed toward, which is um, the quantitative social sciences. Um, and then um, we, we didn't give homework at first. We just said, do these exercises, look up the solutions, uh, compare your answers. And obviously a lot of students didn't do that and, and didn't do well on their exams. So then we wanted to grade their homework, but there's too, too many papers to grade. So that, that um, direction didn't seem feasible. Um, and also, of course, students don't like spending um, more than a hundred euros or hundred dollars or whatever your currency is on a textbook that they're only going to use for a few months and then have to um, sell to someone else. So we wanted to get away from having a textbook as well. So eventually um, we, we used an online platform um, for just, just for making assignments that could be graded automatically uh, and these uh, this worked okay but the the questions all were exactly the same so students could copy each other easily um, and so not not learn obviously so what we really wanted was a system that would um, ask students essentially the same questions but with different numbers so um, we, we came across uh, in our own neighborhood, in our own backyard, um, the uh, Bolster Academy um, and uh, what they had to offer because one of our students was doing a, an internship there. Um, so that solved so many problems for us. First of all, uh, no more buying a textbook because all the content is online um, and the uh, staff there at Bolster are 
willing to listen to us and make changes and add things to the content so that it's um, covering the things that we want to cover and in, in the way we want to cover it with with the the angle that we want to cover it in um, and then we can pick and choose what we want to use and not use in our class so no more need for a textbook um, the students still have to pay a, a fee but it's so minor compared to the cost of a textbook that it's it's, it's practically nothing and it lasts for for a whole full year so that they can still use the material after the course is done. But then the other thing is then, uh, as Mark mentioned, the, the learning is interactive. So they, they read content, then they try some exercises to practice, and then they get immediate feedback if they've done the exercise correctly or not. And if not, they can try again and again and again, each time with different numbers, um, same question, but with different numbers or they can ask for the solution and see the solution and find out what they're not doing correctly. So they get the instant feedback, uh, unlike doing exercises in a textbook where you, you might not even know if you got it right or not until you review it with someone else, or you look up the answer in the back, but it's only the final answer and then you don't see how to get it. Um, so there, there became uh, available this element for the class that all the students could get instant feedback as they worked and practiced, which made them uh, more willing to, to put in the time to, to uh, practice what they're learning and to, um, uh, it, made it, it made it more fun. So it, even though they're doing maybe the exact same thing as they would with a textbook, just doing things online, uh, I think I can even say the same thing. It just feels more fun. And then the next big problem that was solved is we could assign homework using the content in the online platform where all the students are doing the same questions, but the, the numbers used in the questions are randomized. So they can't, they can't exactly copy each other. They, they might be able to, to work together and, and help each other but they have different numbers to work with, so they have different answers. Um, and they, we, we can give them an option to repeat the question if they get it wrong so that they have, they have a second chance at it. But eventually they have an assignment that they have to do within a, a period of time. We give them a week. Uh, at the end of the week, uh, the deadline passes and the, uh, the platform calculates their, their best score on all the questions and then that gets submitted as a grade in, in their final part of their final grade. It's not a huge part of it, but it's, it's two or 3%, which gives them some incentive. And as a result, when we get around to the exams, they're well prepared for the exams. And we've seen the overall performance improve quite a lot in the last few years that we've been using this platform. Now, um, this past semester that just finished, we had the additional problem that we could no longer meet in the classroom. So the whole class was online and it was quite fortunate that we already had this whole course set up um, so that students could basically um, teach themselves uh, even if they um, don't, don't uh, attend the online lectures, they can just figure things out by working with the online content and then we were able to use the system also to do online exam. Uh, we had three summative exams during the semester and um, we were able to do that. It's not what we normally would do. We normally give paper exams in the classroom, but uh, this was a great uh, alternative and we made it work. And, it, and um, the only thing is we had to have them turn on their um, cameras so we could watch them while they were taking the exam. So it was a little bit difficult in terms of test security, but uh, we, we feel like things went well. Um, and there's a lot of options uh, in using this platform so that you can customize the course to the way you want to do it and um, give give uh, some students, like you might, you might want to give a student extra time because they have you've been sick or something, you can easily do that. So there's just a lot of ways to um, 
adjust things to to customize it for your for your preferences. So uh, switching from the traditional way of doing things solved a lot of problems for us. And most importantly, the students dramatically improved in their learning. And now for the next semester, we are going to be implementing another course for Statistics for Sciences, which is still in development. And we anticipate the same uh, dramatic uh, improvements in that course. Well, for this course, there are typically around 60 students per semester. Um, three groups, so around 20 per group. Uh, with, the, with the online exam, we had each student open Zoom while they were doing the exam, and we could look at them through the camera and see that they're working by themselves. The only thing is we couldn't see what was on their screen while they were working, but we told them that uh, we might periodically ask them to share their screen so that we can see what they're doing. And even though we didn't do that, the fact that they knew we might ask that, we hope um, was helpful. Uh, this, this exam was closed book, but we did allow them one sheet of notes because it's for statistics. Uh, we don't want them to memorize a lot of formulas. Uh, we want them just more to understand um, and know how to interpret the results. So we allowed them one sheet of notes only and um, that, that we could see on their desk while they were working. Uh, each, each teacher um, had like 20 students on, on Zoom and so we split up the, the workload. Yeah, the exam also had randomized numbers in the questions, uh, so they didn't all get the exact same question. All right, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Michael, uh, yeah. and thanks for answering the, the question uh, from the participants. Yeah, yeah, indeed, it, uh, in our backyard, that's entirely true. Uh, we're also based on the same science park, uh, but so now to um, something different. Uh, not in our backyard, well. <laughs> Actually, in the digital world, uh, the, the whole world is your backyard, of course. Um, and uh, as said um, uh, in the beginning, this is not live. This is pre-recorded uh, because of it being um, 2.30 right now in, uh, in, in Melbourne. So I will start the, the YouTube video. So my name is Anne Eastor, and I'm a teacher at Monash University in Australia. And we have been using the Bolster Academy material for our first year unit functions and their applications with the students. Yeah. So we use the Bolster lecture notes along with our own lecture notes. And we found that the students really responded well to the fact that it was online. So they would turn up to their lectures in the theatres, but then they would have access to all the online lecture notes. Um, and I think partly because they've been used to doing that in secondary school, this was a very comfortable way of learning for them. Using the theory pages has worked well because we've been able to modify those notes that Bolster had um, so that they are then in line with, um, with our maths unit and sort of adding a few things and fine tuning a little bit and also just working with um, developing it into our style. Um, so the Bolster Academy we used as a, as a base and then just sort of padded it out as with extra material. Um, the exercises that we put into each of the chapters, the, we used a lot of the Bolster material and developed those exercises. So some of them we would, um, we would add to and others we would just start from scratch and do a new batch of exercises. But having the... Um, having the, all the extensive exercises that were already there for Bolster allowed us to, um, to use them as a base and then we could, we could write extra challenging questions in that. Um, and then we had all the, the, the sort of the standard questions that Bolster had and the students could access those. Um, one of the things that we found um, the students responded really well to was the introductory material, so all the, the prerequisite material. If they needed to go and access that, 
then they could and they did that in their own time. So we had um, as like a, a pre-assessment or a diagnostic test, the students would would sit that to start. And then from that, they would then be able to see for themselves what material they may need to go through before they then started the unit. So they were then able to be well prepared to begin the unit at the start of the semester. So that worked really well. Um, some of the other things that we found worked, or one of the things that we found worked really well was the, um, the forum. So this, this allowed us to, to have regular access with the students. Um, one of the things that we've noticed, this semester was a very different semester to last semester. We were very lucky that we were able to trial the material last semester um, because now having the, um, the forced lockdown, all of the material for Monash Uni was delivered online. So we had all the lectures online. We had all our tutorial classes online and having the bolster material already there and having seen the students respond so well to it last semester meant we were in a, a very comfortable place um, to be able to deliver that online that unit completely online. So the online well the, the forum, Bolster Forum, allowed us to uh, have that um, two-way communication with the students on a regular basis, like I was checking it every day. So it allowed me to keep in contact with those those students, some of them who were obviously um, you know, feeling very nervous about sitting a, the, you know, their first year unit of maths online, fully online. So it was a great um, tool for us to use to, to just have that reassurance there. And, um, and it also allowed the students to, to you know, be in a group together as well. So, um, so that worked really well. Um, the assessment that we used was a bit of a mix of our own um, assignments. So we had four assignments for the students. What we would get the students to do is work through each of the chapters, so the theory pages along with those exercises, and then each of the exercises at the end of the chapter, we would set up where they could access the solutions, the work solutions if they needed to, and they could do that as many times as they felt they needed. And then at the end of that, we would have those same set of questions um, set as a test. So when they felt that they were ready, they were then able to, um, to sit that test. And if they weren't happy with the result that they got for the test, they would then um, they were then able to reset that. So they could reset that as many times as they wanted. I think for this semester, it, um, it'll be slightly different because there'll be all the added stresses of, of you know, the fact that it was completely online. Um, but again, I think just because they are, they are already comfortable with working um, through online material, in high school they do, they do quite a lot of online work. So to come to university and have that already in place is um, I think it's really comfortable for them because you know, it, it's, it provides that consistency from secondary school to university. Whereas um, prior to that, you know, it, sometimes it feels like they're going you know, back to an, an older style of, of teaching. I think for me personally, for this semester in particular, one of the hardest things is the fact that you don't have that that face-to-face contact with the students. So you you need to really find those other avenues of being able to um, connect with a student and check that you know, are they really you know, working through this stuff as thoroughly as you want them to? Um, and are they you know, connecting with it? Are they learning from it? Is there a slightly different method that we could be using for certain students um, and brand? that out so that you know some students can just go off and do this in the, the mainstream way whereas you know maybe other students might need a little bit more support um, so that would be a good thing for us to look at in the future to be able to sort of split the classes a little bit more and um, and give those students that do need that that extra support well I would say one would be the 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 forum for sure because that has allowed like a, a daily 
um, contact with the students rather than our, our just our weekly classes. Um, one of the other things is the fact that we can monitor how they're going and when they're doing their work. So are they skipping any of the chapters? Are they just attempting the tests? And if they go okay, do they then move on to the, the, you know, the next chapter's test without actually doing the material? And one thing that's been interesting at the moment, they're, um, they're right in the middle of their revision. So they've got their exam in a few days. And um, for me to be able to watch what, you know, how often they are going back and revisiting the material and going over that, that those revision questions and going over the theory pages and, and using it. So they're really working through it again and using it as a, as a revision tool, which is, which is fantastic as well. We've had a lot of good feedback from the students. They, they really do enjoy the fact that it's online. I think they, they, they are very, very comfortable with that. Um, and I think you know, one of the things I guess I would like to pursue with this in the future is that more of a, an individual package for, for the students. So you, like I said, you've got this group of students that you know those main group will, will work through and they'll get through easily, but the other students that actually need that extra support to be able to, to um, tailor it to their needs and to support them and get them through, I think that would be, that would be, um, that would be a good thing. And I guess um, anything else that I would I would add as far as um, tips for teachers taking this on board. Uh, one of the things I've found a lot of fun is writing the the new material, writing the exercises, and exploring how um, how you can get the questions that you want, which are you we you know, we've used them as just a single question. How you can develop that into you know a, a multifaceted uh, question that the students can really pick apart, and and you can you can take that simple question and and turn it into something a lot deeper. Um, next semester, at this stage, um, with uh, our lockdowns changing by the minute, um, parts of Victoria have just gone into another lockdown, so. Um, so I have no idea whether we are going to be going back to work um, with face-to-face -face teaching. There's, we're expecting that it's, it's, things are going to start opening up, but I think there's still going to be a fair bit of um, online teaching again. And I think that considering the success that we've had with this so far, I think that we will still be offering a, a fully online um, section of this unit for students who want to do that. All right, well, thanks for your time. All right, uh, well, thanks, uh, Anne, <laughs> uh, for this. Um, yeah, uh, all right, um, now it's time to uh, show some of the things that we've been uh, talking about, uh, show you some, some stuff in action. Um, there are, of course, a lot of uh, tools out there, uh, but we will show how this looks in, uh, in our tool. First, let me uh, show you uh, what an online uh, and interactive uh, maths uh, textbook can look like. Eh? And, a, and a main uh, advantage of going digital, like we said, is that you can add regular interactivity uh, a normal textbook uh, can't offer. And I will uh, use this uh, basic math course uh, for this, this is um, very much a, a foundation course. It's actually a course I know Anne uses in um, in in, uh, in Melbourne, and Bill has has built on, on top of this. Um, but first, okay, let me let me show you some some theory. Let's start with uh, with the basics. Um, so um, the slope and the intercept of a of a linear uh, linear equation, um, and so we. We really try to uh, add a lot of uh, interactive uh, elements. So here you see. So this doesn't evaluate anything, but it's it's for the student to to play uh, play around with. And it depends on the on the demographic of the of the of the students, of course. But uh, for most of these first year your students, uh, for these non math uh, majors, they they don't benefit from throwing a, a definition um, at them uh, right away. They they want to see something something visual. Uh, or, or a simple example, um, and um, if you use these kind of interactive elements, the students really, really get a feel for for what they're doing. Um, 
let me show you one other theory page, a more difficult one. Uh, this is a, a nice one to show. This this basic math course ends with uh, ends with integration, um, and so this is um, a bit uh, more advanced. So you can have three um, D plotting uh, in here uh, as well. Uh, so this is a 3D uh, image that I can uh, drag and drop uh, like I like I want to, and um, also check this out. Um, it is um, here you can find more more in depth knowledge um, for for students. Uh, nine out of ten students would would say, okay, I, I know don't need that for the exam. Uh, I'm not going to take a look at it. But if you have the students who want, they can look at the more the, the mathematical proof, or in, in this case, there's also an interesting um, a story here. Um, but the, most of them, they they won't be won't be bothered, uh, of course, by this. Um, and another thing students can really benefit from is um, I'm scroll, scrolling down now is randomization. That's it's been mentioned, and this randomization is is, is visible here in these in these in these examples. So. Um, theory pages are accompanied by uh, by examples, and you can see if I revisit this same example, uh, you see that the, the parameters uh, have changed, um, but the the line by line worked out solution uh, stays the same. Uh, so so students can um, can use this uh, a lot when uh, when learning, and the same uh, randomization also uh, holds for uh, when you're practicing, uh, of course. And let me uh, show you an uh, example there as well. Um, so it's a it's a simple example, but it uh, it serves the serves the purpose of uh, what I want to show. Um, and so this is an exercise, and uh, of course, very important when using online online uh, tools, um, you got to make sure that the students don't get frustrated uh, when when entering their 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 answers. Um, so uh, you can use a, a visual uh, mathematical input editor uh, like this one. Um, here, there are different mathematical domains you can um, you can touch on. So we have logic; it's a vector calculus, and there's a normal keyboard here, here as well. Um, it works it works uh, on your tablet as well. Uh, it also works on your smartphone, uh, by the way. And we uh, it's also used for physics, so you can see that the units are are also supported. Uh, so, but there's no no messing with um, with a difficult syntax or, or or whatsoever. It's it's just like it looks just like what the students know from their from their book or, or lecture. Uh, I will hide the input editor for this. In this case, it's a bit of an overkill for this this subject. But let me. Uh, and if you're uncertain as a student, still say, okay, I want to take a look at the theory again. You you can do so. So it. It, it shows the, the accompanying theory, but let's start to to answer this um, this question. I'm using copy paste, by the way. That, that that also works. So we try to give you feedback here on 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 on, on what you're doing uh, as a student. So uh, I can ask for hints. That's what I just did. Uh, I'm gonna uh, make a mistake. Let's do that as well. So I did not really read the uh, the hint correctly. So I. Uh, subtracted it. Um, so, as a student, I get feedback on on what I did wrong here. So, um, I can use that information to uh, uh, do it like this. Okay, I get another um, line of feedback, um, and this. I can ask for another hint if I if I want. So, okay, yeah, you guys already already get the point, of course. Uh, um, over three, and then this is probably correct. Yeah. So if I if I answered x equals minus eight over three in one go, it's also correct. Of course, that doesn't stop you if you if you know the answer. Um, as students, they they love this this kind of line by line feedback. Yeah, they they say this is uh, exactly what the teacher would do if he was uh, looking over my my shoulder in a, in a, in a classroom setting. So this this really helps them. Um, and this this kind of Personalized feedback is, is a key success factor when 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 going online um, because at home they they still get the personalized help. Um, so this way the students don't don't feel like they're that they're getting stuck on 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 subjects. Um, uh, and 
Um, but still, when you're automating parts of the of the, the teaching, students really appreciate still if they can contact the teacher. So this also touches on what, what Anne said uh, actually about the forum. So I will show that. So if I'm still uncertain about this subject as a, as a student, I can ask a question uh, on it and I can ask, uh, yeah, why uh, is X uh, minus, uh, I can input, I can, I can input math, by the way, if I, if I want uh, here. Um, uh, I can even draw uh, to to support my uh, to support my um, my question, uh, and then it's posted on a on a forum. And um, the good thing about the forum is that it's a, a context rich uh, forum. So you see that I posted the question, and you see the the class, you see the the chapter, the sub chapter, and the, and the actual paragraph it was about. Um, but the the good thing is that um so at the bottom here i'm scrolling down now you see my question but here uh you see the the actual exercise and uh and and and, and all my tries and the feedback that i got as a as a student uh and here for the complete picture you see the the formal uh line by line solution and this is what teachers really like of course because they say this is i not only see the the problem of the student but also the process uh, leading uh, to that process. And having a forum like this can, can really continue the feel of online, uh, a real life class and, and have it, having the Q&A take place uh, in, this, in this online class. And in large units, you could assign like a TA or something to, to take care of the forum. Uh, and yeah, in an ideal world, there's also uh, peer helping. Uh, going on uh, as well on a forum, if you choose to have an open forum, by the way. Um, if that's going to happen, depends on the demographic of your um, of your uh, of your your course. So I also want to uh, looking at the time. I, I also uh, uh, want to show you a few um, uh, slides uh, on the um, reporting tool. Um, it is, um, these are static slides. I don't want to do this live. It's because there are real students in the platform and uh, uh, due to, to privacy, uh, obviously, I don't want to show the, their results uh, to you guys. Uh, but this is a, a dashboard What uh, for an individual student. Um, if you, you can also take a look at um, the overview of, a, of an entire class. So, so this gives you uh, the red flags. This gives you the warnings of which students are are falling behind and uh, and or which subjects need need more attention. Um, and yes, yeah, you can also. This is a test result page. Uh, as you can see, this really is a diagnostic test. So this uh, this helps the students in um, identifying and the teacher identifying which uh, subjects are um, still lacking and which ones are not. Okay, yeah. So that was it for the for the for this brief presentation. Uh, we're already running out of time, but there is definitely uh, time for for questions. And I'm getting one here. Uh, yeah, James. Um, thanks for your question. Um, it is um, it is pretty easy to set up. It is a it is a cloud platform. It's SaaS based. Uh, so this would, would mean that we, we provide um, uh, proper uh, teacher uh, training uh, to an academic or author training. You can also author your own content. That takes a bit more time, uh, of course, but Anne says it's fun. So um, you uh, would get a, a training and we would help you set up um, some classes in there. And it's easy to, by the way, very easy to integrate with, um, with existing uh, learning platforms like Canvas or, or Moodle or, or Blackboard, uh, so that you can have your your class and account management uh, going on there as well. So it's pretty easy to uh, to set up, especially if you use our our, our off the shelf content, which you can, like on set, you can tweak and cherry pick from if you would want that. Okay, well, um, this was probably it. Uh, here you can find our. Contact details, oh, my contact details, uh, actually. Uh, feel free to uh, drop me an email uh, anytime uh, if you have uh, more questions or want more in-depth uh, access to, to some of the, the content 